In this video we'll be taking a look at Electron. Like it says right here, Electron allows you to build cross-platform desktop apps with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Essentially what Electron does is it will emulate a browser, but instead it will run kind of like an app. Some of the examples of applications made with Electron are Visual Studio Code, Atom, and Slack, for those of you who are familiar with that. The benefit to Electron is that, one, we get to use uh, languages that we're familiar with, like JavaScript, which has a bunch of great libraries, and using HTML, HTML and CSS, we're already familiar with those, and so we can easily build a UI. Another um, benefit to Electron is that it's cross-platform. So one of the reasons why Java is so popular is that it runs on a virtual machine. And so the developers only have to write one application and it can run on Windows, Linux, and Mac. Similarly, Electron uh, has a JavaScript API that allows you to interact with the operating systems to accomplish what you're trying to do. And so that's enough talking. What we'll do now is we'll take a look at how to create an Electron app. So I've gone ahead and used Create React App and made a project right here. And so what we'll do now is we'll start off by installing Electron. And while that's installing, um, I should talk about the architecture for Electron. And so essentially, you need to know about the main and render processes. And so in Electron, you're going to have a main process. And the main process is going to be what's managing the windows in the background. So for example, I'm currently running Chrome. Now there's the Chrome application, and then there's the tabs that display the different web pages. So you can think of the main process as the application that's managing these windows. And then you can think of as the render processes as the different Chrome tabs. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to I can go here. We are going to define the code of our main process. So by default, Electron will look for a file called index.js. And so we'll go ahead and copy the paste. Copy and paste the code into here. And so I'm just going to change these values so that it'll work with create react app. And so what this is saying is that when the app is ready, our main process is going to create a window. And the window is our render process. And the render process is going to load the following URL. And so there's a bit more setup we'll have to do. We'll have to add electron to our scripts tags like that. And so I'm going to run yarn start. And while that's running, I'm going to navigate back here. So once this starts, we'll be able to run Electron. Hopefully that will 
that'll start any minute now. All right, cool. So we have a basic React app right here. And so if I run yarn electron now, you can see that it opened up a window and we have our app right here. And so that's basically how you get set up. Now we'll go into how to communicate between the render processes and the main process because whenever you're using Electron to build an application, you'll end up using uh, JavaScript and a lot of CSS and HTML, but you won't have a direct way of getting access to some of the host machine resources and data like you would in Python. And so Electron, there's an API called IPC Render, IPC standing for Interprocess Communication. Electron is based off Chromium and in Chromium, every window is its own process. And so what I'll do here is I'll remove what we don't need. Okay, now the way Webpack works is if I were to directly try and import our IPC renderer, it would collide and it would throw an error. And so we have to import it similar to how you would import it in Node, but we'll do window.require. Oh. Like so, and what do I do? handle click. Now, oh. now the IPC render send method takes in multiple arguments, but the first one is going to be the channel that the main process or other renderer is going to listen on. And so we're going to call this example. And then any arguments following it uh, consist of the data you want to pass. And so we'll just say this is hello world. And um, I'll add a button. Awesome. And now what we'll have to do is we'll have to tell our main process to listen on the channel exam example. And so if we do a quick Google. You'll see an example right here. And so we need to make sure we import it. So I'll comment that out for now. And so we're going to say listen on the channel example. And then it's going to wait for the asynchronous event to occur. And then it's going to print out the argument that we pass, which is hello world. And so I'll run the application again. And then if I click the button, 
you can see right here that it's printing hello world. And so now what we'll do is we'll imagine the situation in which using our main process, because our main process is connected to node, it has access to a lot of the system resources. So it would be able to process or grab those resources and then send it to the window. And using the event.sender, we are going to send it the argument of palm. And so, Similarly, we'll tell our render process to listen on channel example. And then we'll want to do something. And so passed in. And so let's try restarting that. If I were to click this button, you can see that we received the argument. And so thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, I will put the link to the solution in the description.